If you're wondering how to start with FreedCamp, in this video, I'm going to give you a quick tutorial how to set up your first project from scratch, starting right after you sign up to the platform. Coming up right now. This is how you first start with FreedCamp. After you sign up for a new account, you're going to be welcomed by this wizard where you can set up your first project. So I'm going to follow this because there's actually no way how to skip this one. So let's name our first project project A. When it comes to the applications that you can add to this project, uh, we don't need milestones, we don't need a time tracker, and we also don't need issue tracker and don't, we don't need a wiki. Now, this final question here is quite important. Question is, are you planning to use FreedCam at work? If you select no, you're not going to get any extra option. But if you select yes, what you're going to see here at the bottom is that you have the option to start the business plan trial for 14 days. And this is very important what you need to do because otherwise you won't be able to add start dates and you won't be able to add subtasks to your tasks in your project, which I think is a little bit ridiculous. So that's why we have to go with the business trial if we want to do these basic things. So I'm just going to hit next and we're going to create our first task for our project. So let's say we're doing translation of 10K words, review 20 hours, and then we do delivery. And let's head to the dashboard. Okay, so this is our dashboard of FreedCamp. Here we can see our project. So let's head into the project A that we created during the setup. We can skip this in app tutorial and you can see here we have translation review and delivery we also ha here have a task list and i'm going to rename this one and say that this is our group for t1 languages german and japanese so this is how you can group tasks into different groups what i'm going to do is i'm going to next add another group or in this case, a list, which will be for all languages. And I'll place it at the top. And for this one, we're going to add a task, which will be pre-processing. All right, and then finally, I'm going to create one final list, which will be for our tier two languages, French and Korean. And for this one, I'm going to say that we're doing MTPE and I can add another one, which will be delivery. What we're going to do next is we're going to add the subtasks, the special feature of the business plan. So if you hover over your task here, you have the first option here to add a subtask. And I'm going to say that this will be German translation, I'll copy this. And maybe I don't want to assign it to myself and create another one. And this will be a Japanese translation also unassigned to me. Create so they're showing nicely grouped here. The same thing we're going to do for the review and also for MTPE. Next step is to define the statuses that we will be tracking for our project and for our tasks. If I open a task like the translation, which is for German and Japanese, kind of like a parent task, we can see the statuses by default are the standard, no progress, something like that still needs to be done in progress and complete it. But as you know, from previous tutorials that I created, we want to go a little bit more granular, especially when it comes to the subtasks. So we want to track things like, did I send a heads up? Was it confirmed? Did I send a handoff? Was it confirmed? And so on. So the way how we do this is that we need to set up custom statuses, and then we need to add those custom statuses in the form of a template and attach it sort of to this project. So on the top right, corner, you can see the settings. And right at the bottom, you have the option to manage custom statuses. So that's going to open a new tab. And here we can create a new template for the statuses. So I'm just going to say uh, localization statuses. Now next thing on the left side, you can see the status titles that you can modify yourself. But on the right side, you still want to match your titles to the three default, let's say status types, 
that the system gives you, which is not doing, doing and done. So we're going to keep not doing as it is because it's something that still needs to be worked on. And we're going to focus mostly on the doing parts. So we don't need to have one big status just to see if things are in progress or let's say doing. So we're going to start adding our smaller statuses, which are related to localization and project management, which will be heads up sent and so confirmed all right this is how i set it up so we have the first status for things that still need to be started and then we have a bunch of smaller statuses which are for let's say tasks in progress but it means that we either set the heads up the heads up was confirmed and the handoff was sent or handoff was confirmed. And then we have the final status, which is done. Now we can finally save this template. And okay, so for now we can close this tab where we set the statuses and go back to our project. Now, if we want to apply the new template with our new statuses to this project, we go back to the project overview. And here on project A on the cart, you can edit the project. And here you have the option to select the custom statuses. I'm going to select the localization statuses. And because we already have some sort of statuses currently, this is going to sort of map the existing statuses to the new statuses. And I'm just going to keep it as it is because we have basically everything in no progress. So I'll save it. Now, if I go back to our project, if I click on any status of our main tasks or the subtask, let's say German translation, you will see that the template of the statuses has been implemented to this project. And we can now say that, I don't know, for German translation, we have the heads up confirmed. And for Japanese translation, we only send the heads up, let's say. But still, the limitation that I would say is that you only see this differentiated by the color and you don't have any indication here of what exactly the status is because all of these statuses are treated as something that's in progress because that's how we set it up in a way. Next thing is that we're going to add the dates for all of our tasks so that then we can see it in the GAN chart view. And for that, I'm going to switch to the table. Now, before we add the dates, what we're going to do is we're going to customize our table first and we're going to remove some of the columns that are displayed because we don't need to show the priority and we also don't need to show the comments. So this will be a very simple table where we just have the task, the subtasks and our lists and we have the assignee and the start date and due date. So now let me start adding the dates. And finally, for the delivery, we'll put in February 23rd. And that should complete our schedule. So pre-processing, I said it that it was started last Thursday. So that's why it's showing as overdue, which basically means I'm going to set it as done and it should not show as overdue, although it still is red for some reason. Now, final thing that I want to show you is the beautiful GAN chart that you get with Freedcamp, which is the thing that I really like the most about it, even though it still could be slightly improved. So this is our nice timeline. The thing that I like that is also missing in a lot of the project management platforms is the structure and the hierarchy. As you can see here, it's showing very nicely. Here we have our groups. So for all languages, tier one and tier two, and you can collapse and expand as much as you want. And it's showing you how long the tasks or the group of tasks take on this nice calendar view. You can of course zoom out and zoom in based on what is your preference. And you can also set the columns that you want to view on your game chart next to the timeline view. For now, let's say we're just going to add the progress just so that you can see. So here we are seeing the status. And if you want to change something, you can just do it simply from here. Now that I showed you the basic functionality and how to create a simple project, let me add one simple project quickly for you so that I can show you how you can monitor all your projects in one place. Now that I've created the other small project, let me show you what is the trick, how you can view all your projects and tasks in one place. And you simply go to the tasks board. And here you can also change the view to the Gantt chart. And here you can see that we have project A and then we have project B, which is the smaller one that I just created. And here you can see 
everything in one place what you need to do today. You can also collapse it if you need to. So you can see what is happening for which project. And that's it. Thank you for watching my quick tutorial on FreedCamp and how to use it to create your first project. I used a localization project to demonstrate to you how I would set it up. Hopefully it was useful to you. If you got any value out of this video, give it a like and consider subscribing to our channel where we're going to be doing more of these quick tutorials on different project management platforms to see how you can get started. That's it for now and thank you. See you.